Well, hello guys. It's been a while uh, with life and all that. I just thought I'd do another video on the um, on the little radio I have here by QIT. Um, but using chip. There's, it seems a lot easier. Anyway, so first of all, what you'd do is you'd go to your computer, and you'd connect the um, the data cable to the the, um, the data hole, as I like to call it, and then plug it into your computer. And then you should see an extra port appear. There it is. Uh, it's USB serial CH340 on COM3. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is just going to turn the radio on. Okay, and the radio is now booting up. As you can see, uh, it's got various um, channels already programmed into it. And if you're in the um, lower mainland of British Columbia, then they may you may recognise them. Anyway, next we open up Chip. Then we go to the radio and we download from the radio. Make sure you select port 3 like we saw earlier, QIT, and the VP12 is the unit. And it's starting to clone it. And when that happens, you will see on this screen that it should start saying read. There we go. Now I must say that uh, when I first did my other video a long time ago, I had an awful lot of trouble with the, with the uh, software disconnecting, reconnecting, disconnecting, reconnecting. And I initially thought it might be something to do with the cable, but it doesn't seem that at all. It seems it's just the the bad software that came from QIT, because Clone seems to do it. And, I mean, um, Chirp seems to do it without any issues at all. Anyway, there it is. It's loaded up what's currently on the radio. So if you have a look down, I've got the UHF and the VHF in two different sections. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to wipe the radio. So I'm going to select them all, and we're just going to delete them. Oops, let's do that again. Uh, select them all, and delete. And now I'm going to write it to the radio. Just so the radio is in like a, a blank sort of state. And he's cloning to the radio, and your radio, if you've got one, will be sitting there going right. And eventually, when it gets to the end, as usual, if you're reading or writing to the radio, when it finishes, it actually reboots the radio at the end. So basically, we're filling all the um, all the memory slots with nothing, blank. So just let that finish. I suppose I could have cut some of this out, but I'm not that great with uh, video editing. Yeah, definitely should have cut it out. <laughs> Anyway, right now, then you see the radio restart. Now, I panicked here slightly because when it comes back, it sits like that. And I thought, oh my god, what have I done? But it seems to load some sort of defaults in when you do this, so it does come back after a few more seconds. There you go. So it has put some random, it must be stuck in the um, in the EEPROM somewhere. So as you see, you have blanked it. Like 
I can't actually remember what I was thinking about here. Yes, I'm uh, actually reading this out after I've done the, the actual the video recording. Okay, I'm going to... Oh yes, I'm going to download it from the radio just to show you that it downloads nothing. So I'm cloning from the radio again. And I haven't included the uh, picture of the radio this time, so... It just does the same thing again. It downloads everything from the radio. And once it's finished, the radio reboots and chip refreshes. And it's refreshed to nothing because there was nothing on the radio in the first place. Oh, sorry, no, it's it's downloaded those ones, those defaults, which the radio seemed to put in by itself. Okay, so let's get rid of the old one. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to import from repeater book, proximity query, I'll say about 20 kilometers from North Vancouver, which is where I reside, and the 70 centimeter band. So it's going to import the 70 centimeter band. And you'll see there's a little repeater book appeared. So I'm going to copy all these except the DIG, digital ones, because well, it's not a digital radio, and it just throws errors. But I will leave one of them in, uh, so you can see what I'm, uh, so you can see what happens. So I'm going to leave one at the bottom there. So I'm going to copy all these. Go back to the QIT tab, click on number one, and then paste. And yes, it's going to throw an error. Well, not it's an incompatibility. You just say OK, because Digimode is not, not supported, and it puts a little gap in there. So I'm just going to delete that little gap. OK, so the next one, I'm going to go back up to uh, Radio, and I'm going to import data source and repeat the book again and again it's a proximity query north Vancouver, 20 kilometers and i'm going to pick the two meter band this time and you'll see another tab appear on the top called repeat a book again and this one's got the ones again now again i'm going to remove the dvs from it because it's not a digital radio i leave one in just so you can see the error message or the warning rather so let me copy that, go to the main one. I'm going to shove these down in there from number 50 onwards. So let's paste them into there. It's giving you the warning about the DV again. So you just click OK. And it puts a little gap in where it didn't import it. So I'm just going to get rid of that. Right, so then we now programmed it with UHF and VHF in my local area. And I'm going to upload it. So we just start uploading it to the radio. And as you can see, it's writing to the radio now. Shouldn't take me too much longer now. Well, there's a lot of gaps here. Yeah. I'll try and put uh, some indexing in the um, when I upload it to YouTube. Okay. Almost finished. There we go, and the radio will now reboot. And 
I'm just going to not, not bother save the changes or anything. So I'm just going to check the radio. I'm going to download it. Remember, it did have nothing on it after I wiped it. So it's now going to clone down again. See, they're all there back again. So now it's now going to read the radio again. And there they are. UHF in the first group and um, VHF is from the 50s. Okay, so that's basically the radio programmed. A lot easier than using their own software. Anyway, I'm just going to tell it to scan and you can see all the channels there it's put in. Yeah, the V7RPT is quite a popular one in the evening. It's got UHF and VHF in the Vancouver area. These guys talk for a, about a minute or two. I might cut it out, I might not. They don't give the radio a chance to move on when they when they key off. Um, it needs a couple of seconds of nothing before it then moves on to the next channel. So it will do it in a second though. I do remember they break off, but then it catches them again on the UHF. See what I mean? It's, they don't key off for long enough for the radio to think the channel's stopped. Well, not stopped, but gone quiet. Come on, come on, come on. They had to stop talking when I'm doing this. And there we go. And it's going to pick up on the UHF now. Or the VHF, sorry. So that's it, basically. The radio didn't give me any trouble at all. The cable I didn't have to unplug or replug. And shape works fine. Anyway, hope you found that helpful. Thanks, guys. Bye.